Hello! And before anything else, thank you to all 1,000 of you who pressed the button and gave me that free pat on the back and dopamine hit. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed, shame on you. Nah, I'm kidding. Or am I? Welcome to the 1,000 subscriber special slash channel update slash hover tank tutorial. That's right. But for the first part, what you're looking at in the background is going to be the history of ohm and hover tanks in general. Now, I started playing this game long before I started the channel, so I unfortunately deleted a lot of stuff because I'm not attached to that kind of thing, but I still think it's going to be pretty cool to look at. Anyway, so first things first, a little bit of an update. Why haven't I been posting more? What do I want to do in the near future with the channel and air quotes, maybe outside the channel. So first of all, um, well, basically I was on leave of absence uh, in the fall and I just had more time to post and record and all that kind of stuff. And that's part of the reason why I haven't been posting as much. I do have classes this semester, so deadlines, assignments, blah, 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 yada, 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 uh, work as well. And just my health as well, both mental and physical, has been a bit of a roller coaster in recent years. So that's it. I'm not saying that, you know, so that you pity me or anything. I'm sure you all have your own struggles. I'll be fine. But if you were wondering why 2021 was a bit uh, video starved, that's why. So what do I plan to do? Well, I'm certainly not dropping uh, the very hard meter playthrough. Um, I want to make the War on the North something epic. And for that, I had been planning to make new vehicles or at least one new vehicle uh, before the first uh, episode of War on the North. And I've been rather stumped. Um, call it builder's block or whatever. I just haven't been super inspired. Also worth mentioning that I don't enjoy building really big things as much as smaller or medium things. So yeah, that's made things a little bit difficult. And well, I'm going to ask you a little bit uh, later on a few questions regarding that. So uh, hold on to your comments for now. You'll have your time to shine. There will also be a uh, poll because I have access to that kind of stuff now. Um, so yeah. First of all, very hard near, not going away, on hiatus, I guess, temporarily, hopefully bringing it back as soon as possible. I do want to keep uh, posting tutorials, that's just my thing. Um, and I've got a few uh, cooking in the oven, so to speak. I want to start a series, a new series on breadboard as well, called Bread Loaves, where I focus uh, on very specific applications, unlike my previous breadboard videos where I just kind of filled time for 20 minutes uh, from basics to not random, but kind of random applications, things that I thought would be most interesting for people. Anyway, I want to make more focused uh, videos on breadboard. Now, funky fixes, I know I haven't posted any of that in a while. It's just a lot more work and the uh, interest just isn't there. So Funky Fixes is probably just going to fade away. Uh, the showcases, it kind of pains me to do this. Um, I did uh, close submissions temporarily. I might close them uh, permanently. I'm going to keep doing the showcases until I run out of uh, submissions. I do enjoy them, but the interest just isn't there either. Uh, there's like something like 80% less viewership. I know some of you like it, but uh, maybe I'll find a way to bring it back in a more interesting manner. But for now, I can't really justify putting extra time into something that doesn't interest as many people, especially when I could be spending that time working on tutorials or gameplay, that kind of stuff. And speaking of gameplay, that brings me to my next point. Uh, I want to start an Ashes of the Empire playthrough. Now, that's going to be one of my first questions and for you guys. And that's whether or not I should start right away. Or if I should wait after Neater. 
My other question is going to be what theme uh, should I take when approaching Ashes of the Empire? I've been considering kind of uh, going with a, a Norky style, which I think would be pretty cool. Scrappy looking vehicles. Uh, I think that would be a nice change of pace from my fancy vehicles. While I would still definitely focus on how they look, but anyway. Or do you want more hover tanks? <laughs> that would be the main options. Feel free to comment uh, with more options or more ideas. But I definitely want to do something probably with uh, Ashes of the Empire. I, I want it to be smaller because I just enjoy smaller builds more. Another thing I've been considering is streaming. I don't want to do it regularly or make it a big thing. But I want to, you know, I want to consider it because I think it'd be cool. It'd be a cool way to hang out with you guys every now and then and just play something else without focusing as much on the quality of the content. Although I, I'm saying that, but I'm a perfectionist, so <laughs> I probably would have a hard time uh, just letting go entirely of it. But, you know, the focus would be on hanging out. Anyway, let me know what you think about that. And finally... Um, I'm considering picking up different games at some point, maybe not in the near, near future, but uh, maybe uh, like in the summer or something. I wouldn't be picking games that are radically different from, from the depths. Uh, right now, my main idea is to start a playthrough of Avorian when the 2.0 patch drops. There's also Star Sector that has uh, received a pretty big patch recently. So, you know, that type of stuff. So if you want to suggest games, that would be uh, a prime time to do that. And without further ado, the hover tank tutorial. Or, well, in my case, it's pretty much how I build any vehicle, really. And I split it into three phases. And the first phase is the concept phase. You don't need to be in game to do this. In fact, you can do this with just a piece of paper or notepad or whatever or paint. Um, and the thing is to basically plan what you want on your vehicle and possibly what you want it to look like. So the first question to ask yourself is simply, what kind of vehicle do you want? What kind of vehicle do you need if you have other vehicles? Now, there are a lot of possible answers that are good, but there are also answers that are potentially bad. And unfortunately, it's one of few things that comes with experience and cannot really be taught. So some of the things you're gonna want to consider. A price bracket. Now you don't need to be super precise, especially if you're newer to the game, you're likely to overshoot and, or maybe to undershoot. Uh, consider the size of your vehicle and especially, especially think about the main thing you want your vehicle to do. Try to specialize. The more vague your role for your vehicle is, the worse it's going to be. Trust me on that one. Because the clearer your goal is, the more you can pick what is crucial for your vehicle ahead of time. Now, this is especially important for hover tanks because uh, the way I go about it anyway, I have only one main turret and there isn't really place or room for secondary turrets, at least not at the size I build at, where it looks right, in my opinion. And so I have that one gun that has to fill the role that I want. And the more vague that role is, the worse the gun is going to be. And that's the one gun on it, right? So super critical. Uh, the shape of hover tanks, generally speaking, also uh, forces me to be a bit more selective because, well, I try to build something that's a bit like a pancake, right? So that in its favored um, angle, if you will, the way it engages the enemy in the favored position, uh, it's a small target, it's thin. But that also means that, you know, if I want to armor the sides, the front, the back, and the top to a decent amount, I just don't have a whole lot of internal space. So I have to be picky. So train yourselves to be picky as well, especially if you want to build hover tanks. And right, so if you're having issues uh, with your builds, 
this is also the time where you would want to look stuff up on the workshop or in the on the internet for inspiration. Um, do plan the shape of your vehicle ahead of time because it's going to shape how the internals have to be built as well. For example, uh, for a ship, uh, the turrets, first of all, I would use multiple turrets and they would be primarily tall and not very wide, or at least the width would be largely determined by the width of the ship and the height would be in all likelihood the 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 axis where i would have the most space whereas with a hover tank i actually make fairly wide turrets and relatively short turrets to avoid the tank being super tall which helps with the shape later on and make the tank look right anyway now we're actually going to go in game for the next phase which is going to be the prefabbing phase at least for me. <laughs> and here we are on my crappy wooden platform for the next phase, the prefabbing phase. Now that's exactly what it sounds like. Basically, I strongly recommend and that's what I do myself. So it's not just a do as I say, not as I do type of thing. Um, and that's prefabbing all of the important pieces first. So you'll notice I've got shells here that I've been experimenting with. I've got uh, these little things, the ACBs for this thing. This is totally not me showing off uh, the things I've been working on for the Very Hard Neater campaign. Uh, so the idea is that you really need to be ready for the most crucial parts of your build. Now. The turret, as I said, for a hover tank, really important since I usually have just one. Uh, before I build the turret, I'll build the shell to make sure uh, I have a good shell, first of all. I, I don't build a turret around a shell that's bad. Uh, incoming shell tutorial, by the way. And yeah, then I'll build the gun because the gun is, well, the centerpiece of the vehicle. Even for a ship, it's super important to have the guns ready, in my opinion, uh, ahead of time. Now, what that also does is you'll know exactly the dimensions of the guns you'll be putting on your vehicle, so you can prepare the space ahead. Um, you can also test the gun uh, if you make the thing invincible and whatever, and possibly turn off the firing so I can do it manually, just spawn... Uh, something, I don't know, uh, let's say Great White. That might actually make the game chug a little bit, but whatever. Here we go. I, yes, all right. And then I can turn that off because that's annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm invincible anyway, and then I can get closer and just go like, wee and see whether or not I'm happy with the result. Now, that's causing a lot of recoil, so I'm having issues seeing anything. Uh, let's see what that little... Yeah. So, if you're happy with that, you know you've got the gun you want. If you're not happy with that, you can go back to the drawing board, change the, um, the shell, rebuild a different gun, try a different weapon system, whatever. You can obviously go into the build menu, go in there, sub-object, save the sub-object you're currently building on, BERT, I've already saved that, and you can know the price ahead of time as well. So you can know if you're likely to bust your budget or not by doing this ahead of time. Now, the other thing that will tell you ahead of time, and I need to turn the UI back on for this, is how much power the gun will use. In this case, it's just uh, over 21,000 power per second, which means I can prefab an engine. And I mean, obviously, I'm not going, personally, I'm not going into the details uh, as far as how much power I will need to make the tank over. Uh, in the first place, but 
usually you'll take you know your main power consumption add on a little bit extra and possibly even more extra because you want redundancy up to a point you don't want uh, your especially for a hover tank right that's a key thing for a hover tank if you run out of power if your main engine if all your engine power goes away your tank falls out of the sky or into the water or into the ground that which is even worse um and that's very bad because even if i don't personally abuse mobility to a great extent uh it's still a major part of a hover tank it's mobility and so if it just falls into the water and can't move anymore it's gonna get shredded pretty handily so i will build turrets ahead of time and then i will build engines based on the specs of the turret it also tells me how much ammo i'll need if i'll need a, a really big uh, ammo compartment for example uh, it also helps because i can like especially if i make the the turret cap ahead of time which i would recommend also it helps me know what shape the hole needs to be to really uh, make that turret look nice and as if it fits there, right? So in this case, I've got a turret that's kind of uh, elevated and I've just tested that the laser connects and things like that. And in this case, uh, I tested something like pretty thoroughly. Um, if you notice uh, in the Tetris, there doesn't seem to be any recoil absorbers and that's because there are no recoil absorbers. Instead, there are CJEs in the turret cheeks. <laughs> That's right. And using the new bread functions, I can check when my gun has fired. Uh, over here, this little bit, APS fired. I'm using... Uh, I might be overcomplicating things here, but basically I'm checking if the gun has fired. And what that does is it sends out a signal which potentially activates a uh, smoke generator. Well, not potentially, it does, so that it looks extra cool. And if we can find the exhaust, here we go, it turns on the jet. And that's because without recoil absorption, I should probably stop holding the, <laughs> the trigger because I, that's probably pretty loud. Anyway, yeah, so if the gun is firing, Without recoil absorbers, it would push the tank pretty severely. But using that, I can fire the CJEs to only uh, uh, activate when the gun is firing. To partially negate the push on the vehicle itself. And that's all the kind of things that you need to pay attention to, really. Uh, I can do stuff where I have... Um, this turret, actually, I can test. There's a... There we go. If I assign that to a different thing, you, need, you know, I can test whether or not that works properly. I can test everything ahead of time. And that way, I know when I start building the hull that I will need at least that much space. And I can plan ahead as well, like... If I need, let's say, 20,000 power, uh, where is it, engines, I might have, do I have incomplete sentences? Well, let's say for that left turret instead, um, I was playing with a few bricks. And actually, that's not the most recent one. Let's see if I can, uh, this one perhaps? I don't know, it doesn't matter, but like, I can predict the size of the laser assembly inside the hole. That's gonna tilt my platform. No, actually, it's fine. But yeah, I can test everything. And I can tell, like, for example, okay, well, that will fit into a five tall hole. Well, the hole will need to be taller than that, obviously, like let's say two meters of armor above and one meter of armor below, and then the size is whatever. 
and then I can fit the AI and the engine between those two things and just route the laser around that and whatever. And that makes it easier. And you can go even further than that. I have, um, I have a palette that's pre-made. For example, I can start building a vehicle with that just attached underneath. For example, just start building the tank and I already have my colors, even though they're not fleet colors. Uh, that's something you can do. And can I find it somewhere? Pod experiment. So for example, uh, this one I think was for the Regulus. I played around with armor setups and shapes for the pods ahead of time that would tell me well okay i'm gonna have if i want this to look like this right i'm gonna have four meters tall internally and i'm gonna have approximately let's say that's what seven meters three plus three yeah seven meters uh of space in the pods and then i'm gonna have some space in the middle of the vehicle uh which is largely gonna be dictated by the size of the main gun and that's all very helpful things to do ahead of time because sorry because um the last phase is going to be the more time consuming phase and you don't want to have to start from scratch multiple times and that's the prototyping phase and here you're going to see, um, yeah, that's for the Regulus, I believe. That was one of the prototypes. I think that's a successful prototype. I think I built off of that. But it's still quite different. I don't think I adopted this for the main thrust. I don't think the back section quite looks like that. Um, the cockpit is different as well, I think, a little bit. Not a huge amount. The front is pretty much that front. But uh, let's see, actually. I'm pretty sure I've got other prototypes. Uh, let's see. That's another incomplete prototype. But having the turret and everything else built first. Oh, yeah. And that's the, 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 the laser brick. And then underneath is the, the paint scheme. Just attached, just like that. I just load in the paint scheme. And then I just start slapping down prefabs and that makes it so so much easier um, now if you're really experimented with the game you can potentially just start building right you'll have an idea of what you can do in a given amount of space and the more you build like that the easier it'll be for you but for a new player and even like for me and i'm like bordering on 2000 hours at this point i still build like this quite a bit it's just you know you're taking out the unknowns you're taking out a lot of risk of being disappointed in the final product by prefabbing and planning ahead and testing your prefabs and knowing that you will end up with uh, something that will fit in the shape that you want right? Because, as I said earlier, hover tanks tend to be thin, and so I can build thin ahead of time. In this case, let's see, something I've built uh, entirely off, yeah, off camera, um, and it's really thin, and the way you do that, you have to get your prefabs and play around with what is going to fit in something that's only, like, four blocks tall. Otherwise, well, you might notice that, oh, well, now that I have to run an engine block that's only two blocks tall, I can't quite get the performance that I would normally get uh, out of the same or a similar engine. And so, you know, bad surprises. And then you keep making compromises like that and you end up with something you don't like. And so planning, planning and planning. So again, three phases concept phase where you get all your ideas on sheet or a file or whatever and you know 
then you can move on to the prefabbing phase and usually you'll be able to tell at the prefabbing phase whether or not it was a good idea or if it's going to work out you'll test your gun uh, it'll do perhaps better than you anticipated or perhaps worse and you can adjust without having to do all of this work only to realize after you've built the vehicle that yeah it doesn't really work or it doesn't really perform the way i want and that's basically it uh, a few things to keep in mind for hover tanks in general breadboard and just movement and such is a big deal the way you do propulsion i would highly recommend if you haven't watched my propulsion tutorial that you do because that's a big deal that's a really big deal for example now it's been a while since i've done the math but the iron thrusters right i've got a setup here as you can see i can set the um uh e axis basically to be negative one in most circumstances which means that the ion thrusters don't get used under normal circumstances and that actually saves enough materials because ion thrusters are really inefficient and jets are quite efficient on the flip side and you would think well if you have ion thrusters why aren't you using them 100 percent of the time and that's because they're inefficient and it actually pays for itself by not using it it pays for itself within like 10 minutes it's been a while but something like that right the the cost it would um create or add on the engine over time makes it that it's better to have them turned off most of the time you save up the cost of the actual thruster pretty quickly but having them allows me to basically know that if my my tank goes like this it'll be able to get out if it needs to. And then it turns itself back off when it's high enough. Uh, the other thing from my propulsion tutorial uh, that is really helpful is binding multiple axes to each thruster. So all of the thrusters really control the up axis and all of the right side thrusters will control roll. So if I lose that one thruster in the middle for example it doesn't matter because the front and the back can also pick up roll to some extent now of course can't control pitch that close from uh, the center of uh, gravity the center of mass but each of the corners control uh, pitch as well as roll so that is how you get a hover tank that is quite durable and reliable even when damaged because removing any of the thrusters only removes a fraction of the control of every axis instead of you know primarily removing uh for for example as i was saying a lot of people uh, will put roll on the thrusters that are near the center of mass on the sides and if i were to take a hit right there i would lose all the roll control on that side uh, if I did not do it the way I did. So the devil's in the details. Uh, plan and have redundancy and know what you're trying to do ahead of time and it will get a lot easier. Now, might not get that much easier. Hover tanks, uh, I'm, not, I'm gonna say it right now. I did not pick hover tanks because they are meta. This is probably my most meta hover tank because as you can see, it's traveling at 100 meters per second as opposed to uh, around 60 for my classic hover tanks. Speed is a big deal. It's almost always a net positive. And if you've, you know, I'm going to plug my other tutorials here, but for example, you can actually make your hover tank slow down if you're getting hit by lasers using ACBs, uh, which is the only case pretty much where speed is bad for you and yeah exploiting speed would be better having more than one turret would be better you know not putting all your eggs in one basket 
but by making strategic choices and knowing where you're going with your build and testing things out ahead of time, you can make sure that you can make something that's cool and pleasing and works good enough for what you planned. And that's going to be basically it for the subscriber special. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this helps you. I think, you know, a lot of people have been asking for the hover tank tutorial. It's a massive topic. I could probably talk about that for another 30 minutes, really. And I don't want to bore you uh, by starting to sound redundant or whatever. So I'm going to stop it here. Feel free to ask questions in the comments below. As always, also, please, uh, well, not as always, actually, this is a one-time thing. Well, you can always <laughs> suggest things, basically, but uh, this time around, I would really appreciate your feedback on the direction of the channel. And yeah, I hope the tutorial part helped you as well. So hopefully I will see you again soon and pay attention to the community tab. I will probably be putting up a poll at the same time as this video and I will likely uh, also be posting potential stream times um, in the community tab or maybe I'll upload videos. I don't know yet. Uh, it's still up in the air quite a bit. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye bye.